All right. Um, well, I, my plan is to do a global um, um, check and, and demonstration of the, um, the stuff, how to set up MCSoft in, in, um, in Synchro. And then we will switch to the cloud console and eventually to the endpoint protection if you have questions or want to see stuff uh, on that side as well. So what we have here is the, MC, is the, the Synchro account of, uh, of, of MCSoft. Um, if you like to switch to MCSoft or deploy MCSoft using uh, Synchro, you will have to go to the policies within Synchro and there you can uh, select uh, among some few others, you can select MCSoft in the list uh, by just enabling it, the managed antivirus, it will start deploying uh, to the to the devices where you enable this, this policy. So as, um, as an example, I have here uh, MCSoft uh, enabled. Um, so it will now, in fact, when I save this this policy, it will uh, start to deploy the MCSoft client uh, to the devices, to the endpoints. Uh, in addition, uh, you, you have a setting here which says MCSoft managed or Synchro managed. If you here select MCSoft managed, then Synchro will not touch any settings, will not run any scans, just will monitor uh, its status and warn you when, 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 for example, protection is disabled or will um, reinstall when the user is able to, to remove MCSoft. If you select Synchro Managed, then you get a list of options where you can set up some scans. You can add as many as you like. Uh, there are some settings for the web protection and for the file guard um, and some notifications. It's quite limited. I understood Synchro will start uh, adding new uh, futures to this list so that they'll have a little bit more support of, for example, exclusions, which are quite important in enterprise networks. Uh, but for this time, it's, it's quite limited what they offer in, um, in regards to, to settings. Um, so what we see is that most uh, Synchro partners switch to MCSoft Managed, sorry, yeah, to MCSoft Managed, which means that um, you will have to connect your endpoints to our cloud console, to a workspace. And in the workspace, you can define policies and deploy them to the endpoints. Uh, and you can do it per group. Um, but before uh, the endpoint um, is manageable through the cloud console, you will have to deploy, um, you will have to deploy, run some script here in Synchro uh, you can find it on the more and scripts. Here you have the MCSoft uh, token apply script. I will show you what it does. It requires um, one variable, this authentication token. I will show you how to get that in the MCSoft from your MCSoft workspace. Um, and that's in fact the only thing you need to, to enter here as variable. More importantly is that you uh, run the script as um, a system, because what we see when, for example, you will run it as a logged in user and the user is not a local administrator, um, the script will fail to install the communication servers required to communicate with the cloud console. Uh, we see that happen quite a lot. So. I'm not particularly sure why these two options are here because in, in my opinion, the only option should be system here. So just to be sure that the communication service always is installed. So this is the, um, the synchro part. When we go to, um, if you created an account in my MCSoft and you created a workspace, there's a quite extensive uh, synchro manual how to achieve this. So I now will assume that we already created the workspace and I will use my uh, demonstration workspace for that. I already have a few managed devices here, but for example, when you want to, to link a few um, devices from the Synchro um, environment to the workspace, you go to a device, And then you will 
eventually click uh, download. It will download a little web installer, which you can use in emergency situations. But most importantly is that um, the token, which is required to connect the, um, the endpoint to the workspace can be, find, can be found here in the, in the installer name. More easily, when you go to, for example, um, the protection policies, The new computers group is the group where all devices will be uh, will land initially when they when they uh, connect to the to the workspace, but you can eventually create a, a token per group. So if you're going to roll out, for example, um, 10, 10 devices in the management uh, group, you can create uh, a token in the management group and use this token. This one, you can just copy it. And then use this token in Synchro in the script to connect the devices um, to the workspace. So if you run the Synchro script and paste the token, you, I just uh, highlighted, you paste it here, and then you start a script only for the devices that should land into the marketing group. All those devices will, in management group, sorry, all those devices will automatically uh, land in the management group and get the policies applied uh, that you have set. Uh, for those. So it's a very e easy way to to let uh, computers devices connect instantly to the group they, they belong to. Okay, so by default, um, if I go back to the workspace, the devices that um, already have been deployed through Synchro, but have not been connected to the workspace yet will show up here as not managed or unmanaged. So you know that these devices are, are already using the, the license key, Synchro um, assigned. And um, uh, you know that these ones then will be, will be ed added by running the Synchro connection script uh, using the token. So this is a workspace. This uh, needs to be set up per customer. So if you have 10 customers, you then will have to create 10 workspaces. It's a very easy... Um, it's a very easy procedure. You just go to the workspaces overview. You click create workspace. You enter some information, like the permissions of your customer. In most cases, or in case of MSP, the customers won't have, won't have any permissions to make any changes, but you can set that all here. Um, here you can enter the key you got from, from Synchro. Here you can divide, uh, set up the um, per group, per existing group. You can set up templates. I will go to that um, after we finish this screen. And you can um, set up infection notifications, which is very important because uh, the Cloud Console then will send you emails or will hook to your ticket system or whatever application you will use to send events when, for example, the customer disable file guards, or there's a detection, or there's an ADP attack, or the software is removed, you will get an email or an event through a webhook. Uh, so you will be instantly notified by the system. You only have to edit your own email address here, and that's pretty it. But this is very important if you want to be informed uh, about events going on at your customers. And then you click the Create Workspace button, and the, create, the workspace will be will be ready for usage. So we go back to my demonstration workspace. Every uh, workspace has um, uh, protection policies and permission policies. Permission pr protection policies is some kind of list with uh, settings. You can um, you can leave as default, uh, for example, as as defaulted by MCSoft, or you can make your own settings. Um, most of the time, you will have to, to create some uh, a schedule scan if you want to run them, or you have to add exclusions for specific uh, ERP software or whatever software that is falsely detected by the behavior blocker. 
So you can, for example, add that exclusion here in exclude for monitoring uh, grid. You can paste a list from existing applications. You can use um, environment variables and you can use uh, wildcards. Um, so this is in fact the same list with settings. You get when you open the endpoint and you go to settings, it's in fact the same list you get here with the exclusions, notifications, there's not updates, advanced. It's all grayed out because I set a password. So users do not have um, access to the to the UI to the UE to make any setting changes. So if I click on a setting, it will pop up the password dialog. You enter the password and now you have access to all settings. So you can set a policy per group. You can create as many groups as you like. For example, if you have a large customer with various locations, you can use a group for every location, like New York, uh, Seattle, whatever. And then you can make subgroups of the of the user groups into those um, into those regional uh, groups. You can it's um it's quite flexible. You can create new groups. Here it is. And if you want to, to move the group, you can just drag and drop it wherever you like. So it's quite flexible. As you can see, all the devices in the management group here are displayed. So as this might be quite some labor to do this for every customer and to do this uh, for every workspace, um, if you apply to become a partner for MCSoft, you get the specific partner uh, menu entries here on the left side, where you can see we have policy templates. So here you can set up your global templates. For example, I have uh, two here, default for enterprise, default for users. So when I click on them, you get the same settings as you can find in the policy groups, in the, in the protection groups we just, know, we just saw. And here you can set up your global settings and eventually use your own whitelisting. So you can use a custom product name because my demo um, enterprise name is Contoso. So you can upload your own logo in the bright and the dark logo, and you can have your own naming. And as soon as I um, assign this template, default for users, I go to the workspace, I go to the workspace dashboard. And now, for example, I go to uh, marketing. I can apply the template. I just I created in my in my partner um, account. So I just click create select template default for users and now it will apply the all settings which we created in the template it will be applied to this group only you can see that the settings now are grayed out because you manage it now by template and you do not manage it per group anymore so everything is grayed out and when i go to the endpoint which is in the marketing group you now will see that your logo has been uploaded to the to the endpoint and your computer is protected by CS anti malware slash MCSoft. So that's quite a cool future to have some kind of own branding uh, in the UI. And you also can change this part, it's the, the news. So when, for example, I go to my template, I go to default for users, scroll down, Here you can say hide security new section so that part then will be removed the default new section and you go to you type in any url and um i don't know
something like that. I click OK. You see the blue bar started scrolling. It means the, the changes are now pushed to the endpoints. And when I go to my endpoint, it will probably take a few seconds. You can see that the news already is uh, is gone because I disabled it with that um, with that with that checkbox. And now you should see here text. I'm not sure why it's not here yet. Um, the text I just typed in here. I'm not sure why it doesn't work, but I can try to remove this. <laughs> Maybe it works better. It should be logic, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please call Contos Sex Support 11, and then you can eventually link to your website, to your contact page, or whatever. So that's the whitelist part and the templates part. Um, all uh, settings are based on inheritance. So you can, any uh, setting you you make on the top level in your in your policies will be inherited by his, his children. So if you make your setting changes here, for example, set your logo here, or make any changes here in notifications or exclusions or whatever, they all will be inherited by the child groups. If you want to make some uh, exemptions for enterprises or for users, you only have to go to this particular template. Here, make your exemptions. And then only these exemptions will be applied for this template. And the same is valid for when you go to your workspace, policy groups, Protection policies. This is also the same inheritance model as you saw in the in the templates. So any setting change you make on workspace level, you set your global settings, you set them here, and all child groups will then inherit its settings. And you only make exceptions on in the child level, specific exemptions or whatever you like. So that's the template part. That's the um, partner stuff. Then we have recently added a new audit logs. No, sorry. Recently added a new incidents menu item, which is um, version one of our EDR um, system, where you can where you get a list of um, of events, malicious incidents, events that happens on your endpoints. So when you click, for example, on one of them. You get the detail screen presented, which uh, information about the, um, the detection. Um, also a graphical timeline, uh, what happens uh, on the endpoint. In this, in this case, it just was uh, the visiting, the user was visiting a suspicious website. Um, you can here set the, the status when you're investigating what it is. And there you can confirm it malicious, meaning or unknown. And you can eventually assign um, one of your colleagues or eventually the customer um, what to do. You can isolate the device, which means it will be disconnected from the network. Um, but the connection with the cloud console, with the management console uh, will not be affected. So you still will be able to manage the endpoint from, um, from the workspace. We are currently busy, busy with developing version two of the EDR system which will be released in a couple of months. Um, there we will add a lot of more uh, events and we also will uh, improve, um, for example, I will show you this one. You will get a lot of more um, possibilities for re re related to remediation. Um, and also the information here is more extended because the other one was um, a web detection, a URL detection, and here you have real file detection. So you eventually could look up the file in Firestotal or on Google to find details on, on it. And um, it's actually quite cool. So this part will be extended the next couple of months with a lot of more information and remediation and information. Then we offer a way to um, to set up reports. Um, 
we have a few default uh, reports, for example, the, re the Contoso monthly. These reports can be scheduled or they can be run manually, up to yourself. So you can schedule them, for example, to run them every, um, this is the monthly, I think, to run them every, every month. If I click on edit report, You can set when the scheduler should run, how you will get the, the information. Eventually you can, set, can, um, can use it and select a template here, report template, which you can set up in your uh, partner, uh, uh, your partner templates, report templates. And eventually you can make it accessible for your end users uh, by adding them their uh, their email address uh, as recipients, and they will we receive an email uh, with this link. So uh, you can also copy this link to them, so they can get access to the report and read-only mode. Um, the report itself consists of um, of blocks. This is block one, the protection block, deployments data block, infection, and you can remove these blocks, and you can add blocks at will. You can move them. For example, if you're not interested in uh, the infection details, or let me say, not interested in the deployment data, you just remove the block, and then next time the report will run, um, this block will not will not be included. Um, yeah. Every time the report runs, it creates a snapshot of the current data. So it will, uh, because data is, of course, uh, changes every day. So as soon as the report runs, you will get here uh, a list with uh, snapshots. Here you have a few. Uh, this one run uh, coincidentally today. So I just click on the um, on the file on the report name, and then I get the overview um, online with the selection I made and the blocks I set up in my report. You create as many reports as you like. You can clone a report, you can edit them, and of course, delete them. So we see many partners using this on a monthly and yearly base to inform the customers what was going on on the network. So and another option is because what we see is that um, a lot of MSPs do not want their users to, enterprises also not want their users to, to do anything um, can have any influence on detections or whatever the MCSoft is, is, is telling them. Yeah. So what we offer is a way to limit without setting uh, permissions and whatever. Um, you just go to the, to the workspace and in this workspace settings, you can um, define the, um, the level of management. So when I go to settings of the workspace, here it is. Security management, I, by default, is local and remote, which means it can be uh, locally um, managed and also remote in the cloud. Uh, but if you don't want to, or for users that, for example, are very privacy concerned, you just set it to local and then nothing is sent to the cloud, only if it, the device is online or offline. And if you want your users not to be able to touch or decide anything, you just click it to the remote only mode which means it is only managed by the cloud. So then you will see when it, oh, it's already there. So this is then the UE that pop, pops up when a user clicks on the, the little green icon in the tray area. So you can see the, it's very limited. And if they click somewhere, they get this, uh, they get this message. This can also be configured. Um, so they cannot do anything. So we see a lot of enterprises using uh, this way of uh, limiting uh, access by their users to, to MCSoft. I'll switch it back to local and remote only, because that's the default. And if you want your users to, um, I will show you, we have the permission policies for that. So if you want certain groups to have uh, specific access to the MCSoft uh, UE, 
to, to hear it so that, that they will be able to make setting changes or whatever. Like for example, if you have a developer's uh, apart department, uh, you can, for example, ease, um, you, can, you can set them, you can allow them to, for example, disable FileGuard when they are developing something and FileGuard is, uh, is, is a little bit in the, uh, disturbing, um, which actually not happens too much. But you can there set, you can create groups here, put in your users, and then you have, we have here four ways of, um, oh, four levels of access. Uh, we have the full access for administrators, the basic one, read-only access, and no access at all. No access at all, then it's in fact the same as the uh, remote-only uh, management level. Uh, users won't even be able to open the UI. So it's very important to set the administrator password because by default, administrators have uh, full access, which means that uh, the UE is completely open for administrators. So if you want to limit that, you have to go to protection policies. I will do it on the top level, workspace level. And then you scroll down to administrator password. I think I already said it here. Yeah, here's the password. It's on. This administrator password. So for all ad administrators and regular users, um, there always will be uh, the, the, the pop-up dialog, like in my local MC Soft. Um, when I make a change, here's the password pop-up. So although I'm admin in my on my own laptop uh, the, the the restricted access dialog will pop up and your users will be asked if they won't don't know the password they will not have any access to uh, any settings in the UI one thing one thing I would like to add I'm not sure if that is known for people I see here the little relay tag um, it's one or two minutes to explain. Uh, yeah, we yeah, offer yeah. a relay proxy uh, service, which is quite interesting if you have a large customer with, with multiple machines. Um, you, it, it is a service we run, for example, on, on my machine. You can set it on a per machine base. And a relay proxy is uh, a service that will be installed. When I click it here, for example, here you can see it's on. It's uh, installed and it's saved uh, 3.8 gigabytes of data in the past 30 days. Basically, um, what uh, it does? Basic, yeah, basically, guys, it's you're pushing the uh, MCSoft updates, uh, the signature and software updates, uh, instead of pushing to old endpoints in one uh, network, um, basically pushing through one uh, either service or PC. It doesn't matter, right, Frank? Yes, exactly. And the, the signatures and, and program updates are cached locally yeah. uh, on the machine. Um, and also, it will. Um, it will. It has one traffic connection, one connection through the cloud console. So all 50 devices in the network will then connect through the traffic relay uh, to the MSF cloud con uh, and management console. Mm -hmm. So you only have to add, for example, only the traffic relay in your firewall to have access, and you can block it, for example, for the other ones in the network. Yeah. That's okay. excellent. And you can set mm -hmm. up. You yeah. can set up as many traffic relays in your network. Um, you can five or, or two or one it's up to you if you go to protection policies or you go to your templates in the top part you have an option to select your traffic relay so all computers in the in a, in a management group for example or if you do it on workspace level then all computers in the in the workspace will then connect to um i think i set it up here management level so these two devices then will connect uh, through the traffic relay the one where i enabled it um, to the cloud console so you can set it on group level or you can set it on, on workspace level uh, that's like uh, when you have a um, it's more very helpful when you, for your uh, mid to large size customers for example, if they have 50, 100, or 500 machines, so instead of every machine um, connecting to our server for updates on an hourly base, um, they simply pull the updates uh, from one or two um, uh, internal servers or machines. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's very, very cool feature, actually. Um, 
Yeah, no, not everybody knows. All right. Um, Frank, any anything else? Or otherwise, um, we can finish the meeting. No, I think I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, guys. Uh, uh, remember, uh, with at MCSOC, we always hear whenever you have questions. Um, please reach out to us whenever you have issues or questions. We are happy to help you. We just need sometimes if you have issues, we just need your cooperation, your help to investigate those things. But other than that, we are 100% committed to, to, to delivering you um, smooth and, and, and awesome platform and software. Thanks, guys.